Welcome to Credit Matters. I'm Mike Skirbo, Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Group. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the recently published key credit factors for the regulated utilities industry. I'm joined by Todd Shipman. Todd's a director in the utilities team based here in New York. Todd, thanks for joining. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Michael. So what kind of company, companies within the sector are covered by this article and why didn't why, why is it outside the scope of our redesigned criteria? Um, well, we, you know, we took some pains in the key credit factors article to make mm -hmm. sure that we define very specifically what it covered because there's a lot of confusion, I think, out there in general mm -hmm. about what's a utility and what's not. So we want to be precise about it. Um, basically, if you are offering a product that is essential and you, you have kind of an exclusive right to offer that product and in exchange for that you're regulated, what we call regulated, and we'll talk more about that as we sure. go along, um, then we're going to call you a regulated utility and that sort of company um, is going to be covered under this new criteria. What, what, what is different uh, for, for the factors, the, the credit factors relative to these companies uh, that we needed to publish this separate article? Uh, as I just alluded to, they're regulated. Mm -hmm. And so that really distinguishes utilities from almost every other kind of, of corporate entity that we rate here at Standard & Poor's. Um, by definition, they have no competitors, right? So in, in exchange, they're regulated. And so uh, as long as they're protected that way from competition, uh, they don't quite fit neatly into the the general corporate criteria, which talks, uh, among other things, about competitive position. And being the sharp analysts that we are, we noticed that talking about the competitive position of a non-competitive entity didn't really make sense. So we needed to really uh, address that very major part of our business risk profile analysis um, in a separate article that really needed to come out at the same time as the, as the rest of the updated criteria. Okay, so, so let's stay on the competitive position. What are some of the details of how we analyze the competitive position within the regulated utilities sector? Um, uh, competitive position in the general criteria is made up of really three main kind of groupings of factors, and then at the end we look at profitability. Mm -hmm. But at the outset, you're talking about what we call a competitive advantage in the, uh, in the corporate criteria. Then we talk about scale, scope, and diversity, and operating efficiency. Those last two uh, factors, or groups of factors, apply to utilities just the way they would apply to any other corporate entity. It's that first one, which sort of ironically is the most heavily weighted under the corporate criteria for utilities. So 60% of the weighting goes to this competitive advantage idea. Uh, which we've renamed regulatory advantage because for a utility, the regulator is the analog to what competition. That's what provides the the discipline, you know, to a to a utility company as they go about doing their business. They don't have market discipline, but they have the the regulators who are watching over them and um, and do a lot of you know what. A market would normally do in terms of keeping a company in line, sure. so to speak. So, uh, as part of that um, analysis in the in the key credit factors, we uh, we have four kind of main categories that we look at when we're talking about regulatory advantage, uh, stability uh, of the whole system, the whole regulatory system in mm -hmm. whatever jurisdiction you're talking about. Um, the tar what, what's called tariffs or the rates, it's the price that you pay for your electricity or your water. Um, how they go about setting that rate, which is obviously a very important part of the whole thing, is uh, part of that uh, analysis. Uh, we look at the financial stability of how the regulator goes about doing their, their job so that it provides or doesn't provide uh, the utilities in that jurisdiction really an opportunity to, to earn a good return in cash and, and, and we, so we look at a lot of financial metrics on that side. And then finally we look at uh, the political aspect. All regulation, no matter where you are, has a political um, component to it. And so we, uh, part of the analysis of this regulatory advantage, of what, what we call regulatory advantage, really goes to how much do kind of short-term political 
considerations enter into the decisions of the regulator. And then at the end, a very important step is all of those factors kind of look at the, kind of the whole environment that mm -hmm. a utility operates in. Since the rating is really about the utility, one further step, which we call the uh, strategic modifier, which is just a fancy way of saying how does the utility within that environment that we've just analyzed, how does it operate, does it do better or worse than other utilities in that jurisdiction? So we wanted to make sure that you know, utilities, that ratings really reflect you know, what the real regulatory risk that a utility uh, uh, experiences, and a big part of that is how they actually manage that risk. It's a risk just like any, like operating risk we talked sure. about or anything else. You know, regulatory risk is a risk that uh, utility managements really need to uh, need to manage, and it's an important part of our uh, our criteria that we uh, that we take a look at that. Mm -hmm. well, that's good. One one last quick question. You also mentioned in, in the key credit factor article, you we expect about five percent uh, of ratings globally in, in regulated utilities to to change. Um, why is that? Or you know, why so few? Why not more? Well, we didn't get into it, uh, you know, in this uh, session, but if you, you know, watch some other CMTV mm -hmm. uh, things, you'll see that, you know, really the motivation behind this whole effort by Standard & Poor's to update its corporate criteria wasn't really um, a, a feeling or, a, or data showing that there was a, 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 a big need to do a wholesale change to our criteria. It was really aimed at improving transparency uh, and consistency across the globe. And so it makes sense when you think about it that, you know, there would be a few, you know, uh, companies that would get swept up into this a little bit. And, uh, and in a lot of ways, um, uh, the, uh, most of the changes I think we think in the utility uh, space are going to be tied uh, mostly to changes in the financial benchmarks that we measure them against. That's part of the general corporate criteria. Mm -hmm. The key credit factors for utilities goes into when we apply which table. Sure. There's, a, there's a standard table, a low volatility table, and then a medial volatility table. And so the key credit factors for the utilities, for the regulata regulated utility space, goes into when we apply those. And so, you know, some of those, as we say, you know, numbers don't lie. You know, the numbers are what they are. And so there's a few changes, mostly tied, we think, to that aspect of the new criteria. The rest, of, a lot of what we went through today, actually, is not all that new. Um, yeah. And so it's not surprising that uh, a relatively few of the, of the uh, companies are going to be affected by the criteria. We're excited about this. I think the whole uh, uh, utility teams all across the globe um, are really going to uh, be able to use this new criteria to really be able to communicate what our ratings are, why somebody is rated what they are, and what might change them. The, the new criteria really gives us a, uh, some good tools to be able to communicate our opinion of the creditworthiness of a utility going forward. Well, that's great. Appreciate you joining. Thank you very much, Mike. We'll see you again next time.